Hello guys, welcome back to another episode of the Minecraft Feed the Beast server. As always, this is Jason, and uh, I don't know if I showed you guys this last night, but uh, I realized if you put a chest under this guy, it puts stuff in a chest. So even though it's slow until you add a bunch of lasers, um, it doesn't really matter if you got a chest there. Of course, I don't have uh, the biofuel automatically coming to the bio engine. I'm just using buckets. That way I don't waste too much biofuel. Um, I can always just stop giving it buckets of, of biofuel, or biomass, I guess, technically, because this is not biofuel. There's a difference. Um, so today I'm going to work on what this hole over here is for um, and my way in and out of this place. Um, and for that, I want to make something new. Um, and it's got B00's face on it. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's a player detector. It's part of the, the Turtlecraft Miscellaneous Peripherals um, add-on. So I don't know how to use it yet, but I'm going to figure it out. Um, it says, it doesn't have, there's not a lot of information. It just says it returns, it returns the player, the player name when you right click on it. Um, I'm assuming that returns it to a computer or something. Um, I don't know. I'm going to have to uh, hook it up to a computer and see how that works. So that's my goal for the day. Alrighty, guys, I am back. Um, we're in the middle of the storm of the damn century out there. I don't know what is going on. It's the worst thunderstorm I've ever heard in this game, though. Um, so I've uh, I've increased my, <laughs> my charging station here because um, I'm going to need I'm gonna need several turtles here. Um, here in a few minutes and I've been playing with this this player detector here and I think I've got it worked out so let me just start my little test script here um, that puts uh, that puts the computer into listening mode for a an event um, and this peripheral will give it that event when I right click so now you can see the cursor moving there because it, it got what it wanted um, and this is just me testing here this doesn't do anything at all yet it just basically returns the event type and the player name and it's A and B because that's just how I labeled it whenever I made the, the script just to kind of test it because um, I, I had no idea how these peripherals worked at all um, so basically it's kind of like uh, the red net or the disk drive or anything like that if you have a peripheral you have to let it know what side it is on um, if the player detector doesn't have really commands um, it just waits for an event and then it returns that event um, so uh, the uh, like normally whenever you declare this P whatever peripheral wrap you would be able to then issue commands let's say it had a command that I don't know made it made it dance for example you would do uh, P dance and that's like how you would run the command on whatever peripheral you declare here as P um, but it doesn't the, that little box cannot in fact dance um, and so then I was curious exactly how it receives the variables from the pull event function um, so I just declared them as A and B here and then I spit them out just to see how it all works so you got A and B and as you can see on the screen here um, whoops, I don't know why I closed the screen to show you the screen <laughs> Oh man, got a little lag there. Yeah, I just got some lag too. Um, all right. Um, so uh, what was I doing? All right. So, anyways, um, so basically, I know that I can uh, set up this this computer here um, that anytime a player right clicks on this box it will know what player right clicked on the box um, so that can be used in just tons and tons of things I could set up all kinds of scripts that only respond to me right clicking on this box and it will be triggered whenever I right click on this box so I need this for what I want to do with the hole and um, I think let me see how the charge is going on over here. Yeah, these guys have enough power now for me to. Uh... And did I show you, uh, you guys? Uh, where'd he go? Um, I I left Noah last night, like I had talked about, and I came back a few hours later, like three hours, and he had five hundred thousand moves on him. Um, I left this guy overnight, <laughs> and. He now has 2 million moves on him. This guy right here, 
he could walk until the end of the world. He is just a walking turtle. He will he wouldn't always walk. No one will ever stop him from walking. He is the walking turtle. Um, all right, let me uh, let me get set up for a demonstration here, and I'll see if I can make this do what I want it to do in one shot. I have a feeling I'm not gonna succeed. <laughs> I'll be right back. All right, we're back, and I've got generic B here. Here's my test subject. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't sound good. All right, uh, this thing right here is a player detector. Um, okay. Technically, if someone right clicks on it, it detects that person. So, could you right click on it? Is it going to show my face on there? No, no, no. That would that oh. would be awesome, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, it would. Well, you've already made this thing way better. All right. Now, technically, it should do something when I right-click on it. So let's see. Stand still. Okay. There we go. Oh, look at that. And there we have it. And now once you move off of there, it'll put the floor back. <gasps> technically, you can't take them up, though. So they're only going to be for down transportation. But they'll only let me in. Just you. Yep, because I'm the only one that it recognizes when I right-click. That's why I needed someone to test to make sure it wouldn't work for anyone. Oh, dude, that is sick. Thanks but for then... Your help. For re... re are you going to have to move these guys back up every time? No, no, no. Once I get down here and I step off, I can hit a button and they'll go back up. Um, it's, oh, it, it'll oh, be the, oh. the same thing as them coming down. Just Oh, uh, I got gotcha. you. I was just testing it now. But to, you can't ride them up, so unfortunately you have to fly out. But I still think that'll be okay. That is amazing. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. So we've seen it in action. Now let me show you exactly how it works. It's not that difficult at all. Um, it's very simple. The only thing that was time-consuming for me was learning how to operate this device here. Um, and I'm going to have to move the setup for it. I forgot that the uh, redstone... Um, modem takes a block on the computer. I'm so used to it not taking a block on the turtles. Um, so, all right, let's uh, let's exit out of its waiting, um, and let's look at the script. Now, I've set the script on all of these as the startup script, and anytime you name a script on one of these guys, uh, startup, it's going to run when the computer starts up. And I was actually wondering the other night. Um, what happens if you leave the chunk and the turtles shut down? Um, what happens when you come back to the chunk? And they do boot up and they run their startup script. So, because I was thinking about my wall turtles, that which is the next thing I want to work on, I was worried that I'd have to reboot them every time I come back to them. But it looks like they're going to do that on their own. So, anyways, here's the script. Um, we got the red net open, so it opens up the modem on the right. Um, we got the peripheral wrapper, which basically wraps around uh, it stores you know, P as the wrapper for um, the peripheral, which is the player detector in this case. Um, now, I've set up an infinite loop here. Um, I don't think it's causing any lag. I've looked at uh, the server load and stuff like that. I don't think it's, I don't think these little infinite loops are going to matter. Um, and uh, it seems to be the best way to do this. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, for it to always be waiting, uh, because otherwise, once it gets this first event, of the right click, it's done and it'll stop. It'll it, it will sit there and wait. If I if I put this in there and um, just had it on boot up, you know, run this script and do the pull event, it'll sit there and wait for that event to happen. But once it happens, it's done. It, if I come up and right click onto it five minutes later, nothing will happen. Um, but if I leave this in an infinite loop of while true. It'll always sit here and it'll wait for this event, and once the event happens, it'll go back and it'll wait again. Um, so all this is doing is if B, which is the second variable here, the first variable is the event type and the pool event, and the second is the, in this case, uh, for the player event, it happens to be the name of the player that right clicked. So B is going to be the player name, and if B equals good, then broadcast first, um, and then what are they doing? Um, all right. Um, now these guys, let me exit out of his, his, he's sitting here waiting right now. Um, he's also got a startup script and, um, a lot of this here at the start is just, you know, getting his ID, his label, his fuel level, all that stuff, just so I can print that out. Um, the next thing is waiting for the message, um, which is this right here, rednet receive, and all it does is receive any message that is sent to it. Um, I'm probably going to want to stop using broadcast um, because I'm assuming other people are going to have turtles in range and stuff like that. So what I'll probably do in the future is um, 
I'll, I'll make better use of the sender ID because the first variable that comes in is the ID of the machine that's sending the message. So in the future, I'll probably also do something like if sender ID equals 66, which is the ID on this guy. As we'll see here, 66. Um, so I'll put like an if in there, if ID equals 66, then carry on. Otherwise, just ignore it. That way it's not getting messages from other people. Because um, right now, technically, a video can set up a computer across the street. Whoops, I hit a... Oh, my God! Um, <laughs> a video can set up a computer right over there. It didn't you know, broadcast out first, and these guys would go to town um, digging now. So anyways, um, first thing he's going to do is dig above him. Then he's going to go down 15, and he's going to... Until he can, he's going to try to place a block above him, and once he does place a block above him, he's done. That's it. Um, now, I'm going to have to put these guys in an infinite loop as well, because once I get down, I'm going to want to be able to send them back up whenever I want, and then to close this back up. Um, I haven't gone that far with it yet. Right now, I've just got it set up to to work, so to speak. Um, and, wait, let's open this back up. Is this the one I was just showing you guys? No. Okay, this guy, I gotta, gotta get him ready again. Right. The easiest way to do that is just to reboot him. Okay, he's ready. Let's reboot this. Come back up. Alright, we are live again. So now we are all primed and set. Anytime I right click on this box, I open up my, my house and I get to go down. Let's get a new, uh, let's impress someone else. <laughs> oh, not Michael. Poor Michael. You know what I haven't done yet is set my spawn anywhere. I'm just, I'm, every time I die, I spawn right back over there. Uh, I did make myself a, a backup jetpack earlier, but I ended up giving it to the gyms because the poor guy doesn't have a, uh, a jetpack, so. What an asshole! Stop that! <laughs> Make me charge my uh, my lightsaber, my laser light show. <laughs> Asshole! <laughs> I wonder if you can get. Uh, oh, oops. Um, I wonder if you can get the other types of flowers. Oh yeah, I guess you can because there's a white one. Or is that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a new white one. I say is that my same white one? Cause you need uh, you need these guys right here, the indigo ones, to make um, the recipes for the um, the project tables, which you guys talked a lot about in the last in the last video in the comments. You were mentioning the the project tables have recipes, and the way I was doing it all was wrong, was all wrong. And personally, I like I like having multiple tables. I know they have recipes. Um, Packrat's actually the one that recommended I check out the project table, as you can see by his project table right there. Um, and he showed me the recipes the first day. He's got a whole chest of them out here. Um, and I'll show you guys for those that aren't familiar already, because it, it is convenient. Here's his chest of recipes. Um, where's his uh, one for some of you guys will recognize? Well, I guess his one for his uh, piston is not in here anymore. He's got one for a piston. Um, but here, electronic circuit. Um, you'll recognize this one. Uh, of course, he's got a chest full of stuff here. Oh, there's his piston plan. So you put that in, and it, it tells you what you need. Um, so it is convenient, because, you know, it just basically says we need these things, and this is what we're missing from our inventory, the red stuff. We have this, or this, because it's gray, but we don't have any cobble. Um, so yeah, it, I mean, it really is convenient to have these different recipes. But uh, I still want to have a wall of the uh, the project tables too, because um, I like to have multiple things ready to go. But I probably will make some recipes for some of the stuff I'm making uh, on a frequent basis. Uh, but anyways, moving on. I think our next project. Well, I, I'm gonna finish this uh, so that it goes up and down. I need to uh, I need to edit my floors down below here, uh, change the height a little bit. So I'm gonna tear down everything I've built and raise the floor up. I think two levels. Um, <laughs> for Michael, uh, and then I'm gonna put the next floor on, and I'm gonna start. Uh, I'm gonna show you something. But I really don't want to reset this guy. Here we go. I didn't this badass. This is just this is this is this is the life right here, man. It's like a magic carpet of guys. God, it's awesome. Um, 
that makes me very happy. All right, uh, and of course the floor will be flush with them, and they won't be placing dirt. They'll be placing whatever the floor is. But I got, I made some ender chests. Where are they at? Here they are. And ender chests work differently in Feed the Beast than they do in normal Minecraft. So let's place these down. Uh, you'll notice that the top there's three colors. It's kind of hard to see because one of mine are or two of mine are black, but there's three colors and. That's how you link up the ender chests. And the cool thing is when you open one, it opens the other. Me and Packer were playing on that earlier. He was like on the other side of the world. and <laughs> We were we were sending Morse code signals back and forth to each other. Yeah, we're nerds. Leave us alone. Um, but you gotta have a diamond pick to break them, apparently. Because that's what I've been told. So I've, I've made a diamond pick just for these guys. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these ender chests in the ocean area. I've decided since I have Noah and... Um, Wall 3 or whatever the hell his name is. Wall 5. Well, let's see what his name is. Wall 5. Um, <laughs> who has 2 million moves on him. Um, I should probably stop excavating in sets of, you know, 8 or whatever. Uh, I'm just going to set him up to excavate 100 and just drop stuff in the inner chest. And then I'll set up a sorting station back on this side so I can sort the stuff that they're grabbing. Um... And, I, and I'll probably still run multiple turtles because that way it'll, it'll be, you know, that much more fast. That much more faster? <laughs> That's not proper English. Um, the pace will increase based on the number of turtles that I have going. Uh, yeah, there we go. That's as good as my English is going to get. Oh, wait. I still one of his, I still one of his plans. Ignore me. Shit. Um... <laughs> but, yeah, that way I can automate it somewhat to where... Because see, what I was doing last night is I was I was setting up these scripts to go dig these tunnels for them to branch out of. And I realized that really all that stuff's a waste of time. I can just dig out big 100 by 100 areas um, as long as I have a way to sort those items and suck them out. And actually, Packrat's got something set up over here that I'll probably end up using. Um, but I want to look at something turtle-wise first before I make my final decision. But see, he's got his uh, excavator going right now. And uh, he's using this transposer, is what that's called, to uh, to shoot the items out. And I don't know if this guy <laughs> is what is uh, pulsing this thing. I think it is. I think this is like some kind of redstone pulser or something. It's pulsing every 0.35 seconds. I don't know how to make one of those, though. And this little ball going up and down is the chunk loader, so that's not part of it, by the way. See, here's his ender chest that's hooked up to his, his, his uh, not excavator, his uh, quarry somewhere off in the in the distance. And uh, don't mind me, Packrat. I'm just telling all your secrets to the world. Um. <laughs> You're the hero in it. Uh. <laughs> He's got these cool lights too that I haven't uh, haven't made any of yet. But uh, yeah, anyways, it's weird because I, I went through his chest there because he told me to cover and grab something for him. And uh, each person's got things that they're using that other people aren't. Um, <laughs> it's like each person. Uh, yeah, it was a, <laughs> it's a short story. Uh, but yeah, each person's found their own little thing in the in the mod pack that really interests them, and I think it's awesome because everyone's got something they can they can enjoy. Um, but anyways, let me get back to this and uh, I'll see I'll see where where these turtles take us next. Alrighty, guys, I am back and um, I finally managed to get uh, my second player detector so that I can do this. They take Ender pearls, um, so that's my 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 slowdown because we don't have an Ender Ender over here. Um, and I searched and searched and searched and actually Ethos is the one that gave me my Ender pearls to, so I could finish this damn thing tonight. Um, um, it's not completely done because the best way for me to go oh, here. Just let me show you what I got. All right, you've already seen this part. We go down uh, and then pretend the floor is level here and the floor is back up. And I gotta reboot this because uh, I just uh, I just I just turned it off. Oops, I didn't actually reboot. Just just exited. Um, so pretend this one was already rebooted and already set up and everything. So once you get back down here, then you hit that and it sends them back up. The idea is, again, I want to be able to leave this place with jetpacks. So, um, and each floor, I want it 
open like this. Um, I don't want to ride these guys down to say the next floor, the next floor, because I think I'm probably gonna only have like three floors from the planning I've been doing, and I'm gonna use the jetpack for the majority of that. Um, and I want to leave this this circle open here because there's gonna be turtles doing things on every floor, and I'm working right now on a recharge script. Um, so they come back up here and recharge, um, but I'm also going to have recharge stations on every floor, but I want this, I want this square to be open here in the center so that, um, I can easily go down to the next floor, and also, I always know this is open so turtles can come from the other floors to other floors. Um, the only, the only time, the only thing that's ever going to be closed is that or this whenever they first come down, but once they come down, I can hit a button and send them back up, um. So that's the plan. Technically, I don't need this player detector right here. Um, and actually, I think if I hit it again... See, here's where the GPS comes into play. Um, right now, if I hit it again, they're going to dig out. They're going to go up again. I could technically put the, put in the script right now like a, a flop, a flip-flop. Like, if it's up, then one. If it's down, then zero. But I think it would be better to do it with GPS. Because um, I really want to get to the GPS anyways. But... Um, I think it would be better with a GPS because no matter what, they can always check their height and I don't have to do the loop. It's like right now I'm telling it to go up 14 blocks, but what I could do is tell it what this height is and let's say the server crashes and the turtle's halfway down. Um, and whenever I hit the button, he'll go up 14 blocks, which will be too high, but if it's set up with GPS, he'll go to the height that he's supposed to go to. Um, so that's the that's the idea um, behind what I want to do um, and technically right now I don't have it set up where I can call it back down here but again that's where the GPS comes into play because I can have this computer set up to always just send out the same message and then the turtle will check and see well where am I at right now oh, okay I need to come down see right now I can I can call them back down with with the computer um, because I know I know how to but I mean technically um, shouldn't have been able to, you know what I mean, uh, if that makes sense. <laughs> uh, but this only works for me, and that's the thing I like about the player detectors. Now granted, you could, uh, woo, falling, um, player could go into the computer and change the script, or they could just fucking dig if they wanted to get into the plot. So, I mean, it's, it's all, it's one of those things that, uh, it's cool, but it's, you know, doesn't technically keep anybody out. But I guess it's kind of like a lock on your door at home. That doesn't really keep anyone out. It just keeps the honest people out. So <laughs> that's the same thing with this right here. It keeps the honest people out. Um, but uh, I think I think that's about it for today. I feel like I've uh, I've accomplished um, one of the one of the many goals that I've had uh, going into this for different ideas I've had. Um, I really like this player detector um, just because I can do. I'm, there's a million ideas going through my mind right now just involving just this player detector alone um, because it can. there's so many things that I can make it do based on the player that interacts with it. It's almost like having a command block or something um, because, I mean, you know, right now I'm showing you how to use it with just me interacting, but um, I could have these guys do something different depending on who it is. Like, I could have an if in there if, you know, B-double-O comes up and right-clicks on it, they encase him, you know what I mean? Um, or they come up and they start attacking him. Uh, I could do that for anyone. I could have an else in there. Like, if, if it's good, come down, anyone else, bring them halfway down and then split the waters and let them fall, you know what I mean? <laughs> There's so many things you can do um, because you know who the player is the moment they hit that, that box. Um... So if you get everyone lulled into this, this sense of, um, oh, I just got to tap this box and it'll, it'll let me into Goot's house. And then one day you change the code and it kills them. <laughs> that would just be awesome. Um, but I was thinking about this for houses like just out in the open too. Like you could have it open the door and if it's an, a player you don't want, the attack turtles come out and kill them or whatever. Um, for someone like Zisto, that would uh, that would work out really well because um, it lets him in the house and it kills anybody else. So, so much for finding him as the beast. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it for today. I appreciate you guys watching as always, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.